Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today, I'm going to be testing yet another gadget. If you've missed my gadget tests, I've been doing them for years. Old ones, new ones, thrift store ones. I will direct you to the playlist down below and subscribe if you're not subbed already. So today, I'm testing out a gadget that I picked up from the Olive Garden. The Olive Garden is a Italian American pasta chain that you can find here in the US. I believe it was established sometime in the mid 1990s and it is famous for their garlic sticks and their endless pasta bowls. Pay one price and you just get endless pasta. I believe they brought that back recently. But along with the pasta, you can get freshly grated cheese and the servers will use this little rotating cheese grater gadget to give you fresh cheese. But apparently you can actually purchase the cheese grater. I just learned about this from the TikToks, of course. At Bojernis was the first one that I saw. Also at Jordan the Stallion 8 <laughs> confirmed that you could get a cheese grater from the Olive Garden. Of course, I had to find out for myself. So. We went on a little journey. I went to the first Olive Garden and they said, you must have seen this on TikTok and said that they were completely sold out of them and to come back two weeks later. So that was a little while ago. <laughs> so I went to another location. They knew exactly what I was talking about. They had to call the manager. The manager came from and they said, what would you like? I said, cheese grater, please. <laughs> and they came back with two cheese graters. I said, I just need one. And they proceeded to ring me up Dun, 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 dun. So I was successful. I indeed did get a cheese grater, although it took them a minute to find it on the menu, but it was there. And here it is, along with some cheese. They give me a few blocks of what I'm presuming is either Parmesan or Romano cheese. Super, it's already cut to fit to size, and I cannot wait to test this out. So this is the Xylus original cheese grater. The design is nothing new. I tried a metal model in one of my vintage gadget tests. You should check that out. It same exact design, but made completely out of, I believe probably aluminum or lightweight steel. Excellent design. So let me show you how it works. Here's my cheese. We'll save that for later. And here is the Xylus Original Cheese Grater. This is a great company. I own a garlic press from Xylus. I believe it's a Swedish company manufacturer. Yes. And this is my favorite garlic press right here. It's an old one. This one's made out of aluminum. And right here, you can see that it's a Xylus and it is made in Switzerland. Really simple design, very sturdy. And I found this many years ago, 20 years ago in a thrift store, and it's, it's been good to me ever since. So at the Olive Garden, this rang up as $14.99 plus tax, so it was a little over $15. And if you look on Amazon, it's more. So if you want this grater, you can go to your local Olive Garden and see if you can get it there because it's cheaper. So here is the design. It comes with a crank and so three pieces so this is what you have to wash when you use this machine so that's another thing i like to think about when considering a gadget sure it may do what it's supposed to do nicely chop dice slice great but how easy is it to clean up that's a huge thing for me how easy is it to clean if it's a pain to clean then i probably won't use it Right? So we shall see. This looks like it's a tumbler cylinder. The cheese comes out of there and it has the side for the crank. So we place this through here and then take the handle, which is threaded, and simply screw it on there. That's it. So this is the hopper where you place the cheese into there and then this gives it some friction. You squeeze that and push the cheese. You can apply some pressure along the grater, which is that tumbler. And then you turn this and as you rotate, the grater rotates from here. So no fear of any knuckle busting, any knuckle grating because your hands are clear of the grater, right? One drawback I can see is the volume of this is quite small. So it's perfect for 
putting on top of pizza, on top of your pasta as a serving, but if you're doing a large amount, you're gonna have to cut your cheese into pieces. So at the Olive Garden, they already have it cut for you, but at home, you would have to cut it yourself. So yeah, because everyone loves cutting the cheese. <laughs> So in order to test our grater fully, I thought why not make a copycat recipe? I am going to be making a copycat version of the famous Olive Garden Fettuccine Alfredo. So Alfredo is a white bechamel sauce that has lots of cheese and garlic in it. Sounds delicious and yeah, let's make some pasta. So I've got some water coming up to the boil and I'm gonna boil some linguine, which is a wider pasta, just classic pairing to Alfredo sauce. So I'm gonna cook that while we make our sauce. Right, pasta, boiling salted water. I'm just gonna do half the box for now into the pot. I know there's a fancy way to spread out the pasta, but I can never seem to manage it. People like counterclockwise, clockwise turn, something not coordinated enough to do that. So I just do this. Beep, 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 beep. And then I use tongs to kind of help me out because it is important to get it all submerged so it all cooks evenly. And I already salted this with plenty of salt. Meanwhile, let's make our sauce. So in a large saucepan, we're gonna melt some butter. We're gonna be making a white sauce, which essentially is a light roux. A roux is a combination of some kind of fat and flour, and it's a classic thickener for sauces. So in this case, we're using butter. And then you add some dairy to it, usually in the form of cream and cheese, and that gives us a ton of flavor and continues with the theme of kind of white cheese sauce. So I have one clove of garlic, but this is a massive clove. So this I grew myself, it looks almost like a piece of elephant garlic. I don't know, can you see how big that is? If your garlic is not huge like this, use two or three cloves of garlic, normal size garlic. We don't want our butter to burn, so keep an eye on it. Keep it at a low temperature. So I'm gonna use my great thrifted Xylus garlic press and press this right through. And garlic likes to burn too, so make sure your flame isn't too hot. You want it to be fragrant, not burnt. Burnt garlic does not taste good. If you don't have a garlic press, of course you can just mince your garlic with your knife. Shave that off, bloop. And then I like to open this up and get all these bits in there too. And I find it's not that hard to clean, this garlic press. And it's a really great Play-Doh toy. If you play Play-Doh at all, this makes the best hair. Now, we're just gonna swizzle this around. Just allow it to get fragrant. Oh my goodness, it smells fantastic already. Look at this. Mm hmm. Looking great. Now, we're gonna add some flour. Mm hmm. And this is our roux I was talking about earlier. This is gonna be the thickener for the sauce. We're not making a dark roux in this case, we're making a very light sauce. So, just to toast it a little bit so that the flour doesn't have a raw flour taste. Now we're gonna whisk in some milk. Oh, it smells so good, so garlicky and buttery. Do this slowly so as to avoid any lumpage. And you'll see the butter and flour doing its magic and start to thicken things up. And to the milk, we're gonna add some cream. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so once we've added that initial liquid and the flour is incorporated, we're far less likely to get lumps. Those little bits in there that you see are the garlic pieces. So, incorporate our cream nicely. Oh, get all that in there. Alrighty, our sauce is bubbling away, bringing it to a simmer, and you can see how the flour has thickened everything. It coats the back of a spoon, Yes, good saucy texture. All right, now we're gonna add some freshly cracked pepper. And then our cheese. So this is how it works. Pull this back, pop the cheese in there. Look how nicely it fits, that's beautiful. Put this here and we hold this and we apply gentle pressure and that will keep 
cheese in contact with the spinning blade. And then we crank this handle, just like a pencil sharpener, and the shavings will come out here. Here we go. Look at that. See that? Coming right out of there. Easy. So this would be great on top of pizza, on top of your pasta. Just grate it one serving at a time. An entire block though, I guess it doesn't take that much time. How about if you're left-handed? I think this is a little bit awkward if you're left-handed. Maybe you can change the, I don't think so. I think you can only screw it on one side. So if you're left-handed, sorry, I think this is a right-handed product. All right, now I'm gonna whisk that cheese in. Smelling appropriately cheesy and funky. Can you see that? There. See how it's coming out? So easy. And this is a fine grate. This only came with one size grater. So that's another thing. This is specifically for a fine shredded cheese. And I think this would be better with a hard cheese too. If you were to use a softer cheese, I don't think it would grate as well. Although you could potentially freeze it or chill it so that it would be harder. It does take some time for a recipe like this to use grate a lot of cheese. I think the best use of this tool would be as a single serving, just like over your pasta or your salad. For an entire recipe, it's a little bit tiring because I still have to do these other two blocks of cheese. See, I still have some cheese in there. All right, let's whisk this in. And I can take a little break. Oh yes, smells like that green can. <laughs> Remember we had that green can of Parmesan cheese? I believe it's made by Kraft. And we, we rarely used it in my house growing up, but we had it. And I remember sniffing that and like, whoa. Is that okay to add that to food? Because it smells not so fresh. <laughs> I remember being slightly repulsed by the whole thing. All right, let's keep going with the cheese. No wonder the sauce is good. It's got all this yumminess in it, right? Bunch of cheese, bunch of cream, and garlic. What's not to love? Look how beautifully thick it is now. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna season this. Taste it for seasoning too. You may need some salt. Cheese is quite salty, so don't add the salt until after you've added all of your cheese. And if your hand gets tired, you can't really switch hands. Oh wait, maybe you can. Yes, okay, so if you're left-handed, you just have to turn it upside down. and grate towards you, which is a little bit strange. I'm curious though, because I have another, I have a traditional knuckle buster. Let's do a little side-by-side -side comparison. I'm guessing that the knuckle buster is gonna be faster. Let's see how much I can get with just my knuckle buster. This is faster, for sure. So if you are making a recipe and you need, you know, a cup of cheese, using a traditional box grater is definitely faster. It's not as elegant and you don't get that kind of one serving elegance. Um, so the application I feel is a little bit different. In this case, I need my cheese grated for my sauce and I need it now. So this would be better. I don't know. I guess that's not the point. The point is that I bought this grater from Olive Garden Apparently you can buy other things too. I didn't realize this until after I went. You can buy other things from Olive Garden too. Pretty much anything in the place. Okay, so now we're gonna add our knuckle buster cheese. Look, knuckle buster cheese. Fraction of the time. Boom, 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 boom. And whiz that in. So if you need a large amount of cheese for a recipe, this really isn't the tool for it. This is more for a topping. Let's face it, it's really about the kind of performative aspect of this, right? This is a performance. Like, look at the cheese rain down on your pasta. Okay, that's beautiful. Okay, add some more black pepper. And 
let's taste this for seasoning. That's some thick O oh, sauce. Yes, look at that. Blue, 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 blue. Ooh, that's delicious. Cheesy, creamy. All right, healthy pinch of salt. Nice funkiness from the cheese. Oh, my kids are gonna love this. Alrighty, let's assemble our plate. Got my fettuccine. Boop. Now our thick Alfredo sauce. Look at this. Boop, 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 boop. Oof. We'll hit it with some parsley. All right, my lovelies, let's give our fettuccine Alfredo a taste. Doesn't that look beautiful? Love that little bit of parsley on top. All right, so now we gotta mix it all together so that all of the pasta is coated with the sauce. So we would traditionally loosen this up with a little bit of the pasta water that we were supposed to save so that this would be a little bit looser, but you know, Now, I like my pasta a little bit on the firmer side rather than on the softer side. I have one kid that likes it softer and one kid that likes it firmer, so it's tricky. Sometimes you just gotta split the difference, right? Ooh, I like black pepper, so I'm gonna add a little extra. Yo. Alrighty, pasta on a fork. It's a big bite of pasta. <laughs> it's an Akimas. <laughs> Way too big for a bite. Mm. Scrumptious. Mm -hmm. Salty, creamy, garlicky, and funky from the cheese. And I mean that in the best possible way. Cheese, especially aged cheese, adds such a wonderful complexity and funkiness and earthiness. Umami, they call it. Just deep, savory flavor. Mm. So I have to admit, the last time I ate at the Olive Garden, I was in college. That was a very long time ago. So I can't recall the fettuccine Alfredo. I probably didn't even get the fettuccine Alfredo. But this is delicious. Mm hmm Creamy, rich, milky, dairy, and extremely savory and flavorful. Fantastic. I would make this again. I think my kids will love this. If your kids like mac and cheese, they probably will like this. It's garlicky. If they're sensitive to garlic, add a little less garlic, but I think it's pretty essential for this pasta dish. Mm-hmm. Delicious. All right, my lovelies. Oh my God. Oh my God. Built tough has a five-year guarantee, and uh, even though it's all plastic construction, besides the grater, it survived that really graceful fall. <laughs> all right, my lilies, it is confirmed. You can indeed buy the grater from the Olive Garden. It is actually a very nice grater, but it is really for topping cheese, really. It's not really practical for a recipe, in my opinion, because it's not for a large volume. But if you do add lots of cheese to your soups, salads, pastas, then maybe this is the grater for you. And if so, buy it at the Olive Garden. It's cheaper than online. <laughs> All right, my lovies, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like this video. Subscribe. And I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. More pasta. Do you eat your pasta with a spoon? I do not. I shirk spoonage. I'm not sure why. Maybe because I'm simply lazy and I don't want to wash another spoon, but I
I, I, I just don't see, I don't see, I don't know, Italian friends chime in. Mmm! Mmm, mmm, mmm.